वेलकम टू टुडेज एडिशन ऑफ अमेरिकन विजन आम हरप्रीत सिंह तूर मेरे वालों आप सबू प्यार भरी सत श्रीकाल नमस्कार आदाब एंड शलोम बिफोर वी स्टार्ट टुडे शो आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू थॉक अबाउट दिस डिटेक्टिव फ्रॉम वन ऑर टू प्री सिंह जी के रिचमेंट हिल दी प्री सिंह पी है ब्रायन सैमनसन ही सैमन ने दैट्स वॉट दे कॉल हैम बेसिकली ही वॉज रियली ए गुड खाप विद इन द breed of the cops yeah the sada apna experience hai uh, of the cops back home but it is the police hai jehdi it's a different kind of uh, training different kind of everything and he got shot uh, couple of days back and uh, basically it was a friendly fire still uh, final report is not out yet ke how the whole thing happened uh, 120 ਸਟ੍ਰੀਟ ਅਟਲਾਂਟਿਕ ਐਵਨਿਊ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਟੀ ਮੋਬਾਈਲ ਸਟੋਰ ਹੈ ਵਿਚ ਇਸ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਰਨ ਆਪਣੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਰਨ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਮੁੰਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਦ ਗਾਇ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਨੋ ਵੈਦਰ ਹੀ ਓਨਸ ਔਰ ਹੀ ਵਰਕਸ देयर ਐਕਸਕਿਊਜ਼ ਮੀ ਸੋ ਸਮਬਾਡੀ ਕੇਮ ਇਨ ਰੋਬਰੀ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਟੈਕਟਿਵ ਵਾਸ ਨਾਟ ਈਵਨ ਔਨ ਦ ਡਿਊਟੀ ਉਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਬਟ ਹੀ ਹਰਡ ਦ ਕਾਲ ਕਿ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਰੋਬਰੀ ਇਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਕੇਮ ਇਨ ਦੂਜੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਉਹ ਪ੍ਰੀਸਿੰਗ ਤੋਂ ਵੀ ਦ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਆਫੀਸਰਸ ਕੇਮ ਇਨ and within 11 second more than 40 shots were fired aur ek goli hai jehdi ohde chhati te lagi hai kyunki he was not on duty so he did not have uh, uh, the protection gear on him te he died uh, one of another cop also got shot uh, jehda banda robbery karna aaya si even though he had uh, uh, nakli gun si ohde kol but it appeared actually a magnum 45 style gun the it's not easy to uh, distinguish or eh jehde decision hunde ya those are like split second decision which you have to take or oh jehda uh, detective da jehda ek it's a big loss to the community kyunki 19 saal ho gaya si ohnu us precinct de vich kaam karde nu and he never uh, went anywhere else ਔਰ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਹੀ ਵਾਸ ਕੰਸੀਡਰਡ ਏ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਗਾਏ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਆ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਹਿਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗ ਰਿਹਾ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਹਿਮ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਹੀ ਵਾਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਲਾਈਕ ਥੈਟ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਪਰਸਨ ਔਰ ਐਸ ਐਤਵਾਰ ਨੂੰ 102 ਪ੍ਰੀਸਿੰਕ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ 2 ਵਜੇ ਦੁਪਹਿਰ ਨੂੰ ਐਸ ਸੰਡੇ ਨੂੰ ਕੱਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰਸੋਂ ਕੱਲ ਸੈਟਰਡੇ ਆ ਸੰਡੇ ਨੂੰ ਦੁਪਹਿਰੇ 2 ਵਜੇ 102 ਪ੍ਰੀਸਿੰਕ ਵਾਲੇ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਏ ਵਿਜੂਅਲ uh some of the faith leaders are doing a vigil over there in front of the precinct te main samajhda hai ke sade vaste punjabi community vaste in general te sikha vaste khaas taur de utte ek eh mauka aaya ke we should be there ja ke utthe participate kariye apni jehdi hai in strength te show kariye pe ya uh we it is something a tragedy happened in the precinct and we are a part and parcel of this community and uh, we understand what it is and we will do whatever we can or hor bhi ek do cheezan they are still in discussion pe assi kidda us cop the family nu ja us nu kisi na kisi tarah koi to show a gesture community walon o discuss ho reha hai ya o bhi jyo jyo agge hoya we will let you know ਪੇ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਤੇ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਆ ਤੇ ਡੈਫੀਨਿਟਲੀ ਮੇਰਾ ਖਿਆਲ ਆ ਪਈ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਪੇਟ ਇਨ ਦੈਟ ਤੇ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਬੈਕ ਟੂ ਦ ਰੂਟੀਨ ਆਫ ਟੁਡੇਸ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ देयर वाज ਯੂ نو ਵੀ ਡਿਡ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਕਟ ਅਟਰਨੀ ਕੁਈਨਸ ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਕਟ ਅਟਰਨੀ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਅਪ ਥਿਸ ਈਅਰ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਦ ਕਰੰਟ ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਕਟ ਅਟਰਨੀ uh uh district attorney brown is not seeking another term um he is retiring and he is into i think mid to eight 80s i really don't know how old he is <coughs> but i think he is about 88 or 89 something like that uh but the important thing is this is a change which is coming up after about 25 years he is there for almost 25 years maybe a little bit more than that we are going to talk about it and probably ask our the gentleman who is here today who is going to run as one of the candidate in the primary the primary is going to take place on june 25th 
<coughs> it sounds weird because we are used to have the primaries in September. But this is happening on June 25th, which is a Tuesday. And that primary is very important because uh, the DA plays a major role in any crime fighting machinery, any law abiding machinery, any people who break the laws, how to get hold of them, how to manage presenting the cases, preparing the cases, and going to the court, uh, presenting the whole case in front of a judge. And believe it or not, the gentleman who is running and who I'm going to bring right in front of you right now happens to be a judge who resigned actually on um, uh, last September uh, to run because if you are a judge you cannot raise the money and to run the, for the DA's election you have to raise the money. <coughs> Without money you cannot run or win the election. So f before we go further into those details first let me welcome him Judge Lesak. Thank you very much. Did I pronounce much. it right? You pronounced it right. Thank you. you. Thank thanks you. for, thanks for uh, you know coming on the show. Uh, just Punjabi, just FYI, uh, we did talk about it. This is international channel, and we have a huge following of this channel. Beautiful. And a big following of this show also because uh, we discuss, I discuss basically you know different issues which affect the community. So, like I mentioned, you were a district attorney, assistant uh, assistant DA, right? That's correct. And you started <coughs> in 2003? As a judge. As a, as that, a judge. Uh, right. And before that, you were assistant uh, district attorney. For 25, and how long? for 25 years. 25 years. Okay. And you were a judge in Queens Court, Supreme Court, right? Supreme Court. Okay. And one... You know, you were in the, not the civil, but you were in the... Criminal the, criminal term. Criminal term, okay. I'm trying to grasp the, the terminology the while I do it. Supreme Court is divided into a civil term mm -hmm. and a criminal term. I okay. was in the criminal term for almost 15 years. Okay. And I, when I resigned, I was the deputy administrative judge. Okay. The, the number two judge. Number two judge. In the county, in the criminal term. Hmm. That's interesting. So it means basically, you know... Uh, you decided that, okay, you are going to run for the DA because being DA is so important for the community. It's a very, it's the most important position in Queens County. Why it is that important? Well, first of all, it's a very large organization. <coughs> I don't know if you noticed, but there are over 325 lawyers working in the district well, attorney's I office. want you to discuss so that the people can have a sense of this organization, even if I know it. Right, okay. But I want to, like they say, you know, want to hear from the horse's mouth. All right. <laughs> the district attorney's office in Queens County is housed in a number of buildings right near Union Turnpike on Queens Boulevard. And there are anywhere between 325 lawyers 340 lawyers at one time, give or take. And they are divided into six divisions. And oh. under those divisions, there are approximately 15 to 17 bureaus. Okay. So it's a, it's a massive organization. In addition, there's a, about 80 detectives that work there, and they have support staff. Well, total, it's between 500, 550 employees. So we're there. talking about, uh, give or take, about 350 attorneys. Right. Plus 80 plus detectives. Right. And plus ancillary staff, which actually supports them. Right. One so way or the other. That's correct. Okay. So it's a massive organization. So it's a massive organization. Uh, that What makes that DA so important that you decided to leave your number two position being very prestigious position and you decided that no DA is more important because you wanted to deliver a more uh, equitable justice if I may say? That's correct because as a judge you can only handle one case at a time okay one trial at a time as the DA all of the criminal cases in Queens County are your responsibility all those cases and you could set policy that affects all the cases in Queens and basically affects the population of Queens, which is about 2.3 million people. It's a massive responsibility. 
Uh, when, when you say set the policy, because judges have to follow certain laws. That's correct. Right? So when you talk about setting up the policies, what do you mean by that term, setting up the policies? Is there some rules which you set up within your organization? Or you can basically request the judges to make some adjustments in the way they look at the cases? You can focus. In, in the past, there was a big heroin problem in mm -hmm. Queens County, big mm -hmm. heroin going way back. The district attorney at the time focused on the heroin cases and demanded that they be handled a special way. And you can do that on any type of case. Like today, a big problem is uh, gang cases. Mm -hmm. You can focus your resources on the gang cases. That's what I mean. Okay, it's so you, you have the... Discretion, uh, discretion. The, the, yeah, you have the discretion to make the adjustments where the priority should be. Uh, what about, you know, when they talk about that uh, there were some strict rules and regulations where uh, judges did not really have some of the leeway that, okay, a guy comes in, a kid comes in, and he hasn't done anything, he's really good at school, but all of a sudden he ends up doing something stupid, and he's in front of the judge. And judge ends up sentencing him to five years or ten years based on whatever it is, saying that there is nothing I can do because that's the law. Are there anything which, being a DA, you can set some ball rolling to make those changes or yeah, stuff like that? As a DA, well, first of all, when I was in the DA's office as an executive assistant DA back in the uh, early 90s when Judge Brown came in, we set up a number of diversion programs for young people mm -hmm. because I made mistakes in my teenage years. I'm sure most people did. One, we all do. We all do. One bad night shouldn't ruin your whole life mm -hmm. because if you get saddled with a criminal conviction, that could affect your ability to get into a good school or get a good job or get into a union. All right? I don't want to do that to a young person. We're losing too many of our young people to the criminal justice system. And they, they cannot be a part of the productive uh, community, if I may say, even though they're living within the community. That's correct. They can't be a productive member of society. Of the society. Once they get that mark on them, they, they're limited in their opportunities to further themselves. They're yeah, limited. Okay. So it's uh, about time to take a break. Let's take a break. And after the break, we'll be right back. Uh, continuing on our uh, discussion on the probable next district attorney for Queens. And uh, the primary again is on June 25th. It's a Tuesday. Mark down on your calendars. I always say you want someone who you like, you got to make sure that you get out and vote. We are not known for voting. And we need to change that perception for ourselves and for our kids. Um, excuse me, uh, coming back to you, Judge, uh, if I may just call you as a judge instead of Judge Lysak, you know. Uh, there is any, anything in particular which you can, you know, discuss that, okay, these are the things where the district attorney can set up certain special cells, special units, like you mentioned, you know, cocaine issue. But right. then there are other issues also. Cocaine is their issue, which is more related to a, you know, criminal, which is like more gun violence and stuff like that. But there are other violences also. Uh, those are like subtle violences or otherwise. Uh, domestic violence is also one of them. Um, how, how you think that, that those issues should be tackled uh, which are not being tackled properly, especially for South Asian community? Well, the big issue, well, first of all, over time, there are different issues that come up, and then you deal with them in the criminal justice system. And like I said, years ago, there was a uh, problem with drugs. Now, uh, uh, we had a big problem with murders. I was in charge of all the murders in Queens for mm. most of my time in the DA's office. And I... Uh, Investigate was in charge of investigating the, about over 2,000 murder cases. Back then, we were getting um, 19, 
1990, 91, 92, there was uh, 361 murders in Queens in mm. one year. I think last year there were less than 50. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it definitely has gone down. I'm here since 83. I still remember when we had more than 2,000 murders a year. In the whole city. In the whole city, right. yeah. That, yeah. That's at that time. That was mm -hmm. at the end of the 80s, yeah. early yeah. 90s. Yeah. Uh, thank God we've got that way down. But the problem now is the gangs. The gangs are starting to come up again as a problem, and we have to address it. And the way I would address it is strengthen up the gang unit and focus on certain gangs and form a task force with the police department so you can focus on those gangs because they intimidate witnesses, they threaten witnesses, and we have to be able and to... And also at the same time, we have to make sure that the young generation, they should know that gang, being a member of the gang is not really something which you want to put as a badge on your shoulder. That's correct. I'm, I also intend to set up bureaus to have the young assistant DAs go out into the high schools and speak to the young kids that are, uh, you know, 14, 13, 12 years old. They're getting at that age where the gangs try to recruit them. So we have to go out there and positively tell them that the gangs are not the answer. The gangs wind up uh, being a dead end street. You're in a gang. And they're going to get gang members who have been convicted of serious crimes. Have them talk to these kids. Have them talk to these kids and, you know, tell them, learn by my mistake. Learn by my mistake. I'm in prison for 15 years because I did stupid things. Yeah, and I joined maybe, the gang. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can have save. no, well, no um, chance of even getting out of the jail for the rest of the life. That's correct. Right? Yeah. Out of all the candidates, <coughs> uh, how many candidates we have right now? About six, six, maybe seven. Okay. Out of those six or seven candidates, I heard that you are the one who has the most experience. Uh, no one can compare with my experience. The Supreme Court judge, 15 years. Assistant district attorney for 25 years. Nobody, so that's 40 years. Yes, yes. Okay. And when I was in the DA's office, 19 of those 25 years, I was a boss. I was a chief of homicide, and then I was the executive assistant district attorney in charge of major crimes, and that's all the serious crimes. No one has that experience. Hmm. And uh, those, that kind of experience, you intend to utilize that experience into making the Queens District Attorney's Office more effective tool to deal with the, all those issues? That's correct. That experience, plus I want to make the Queens District Attorney's Office reflect our community. We are, as you know, the most diverse county in America, or probably the world. The office needs to reflect that. Especially in the higher, was, higher was, echelons of the I office. Was, I was going to come over there because right now it is not being reflected no, like that. No, it doesn't. Yet. And yeah. it's not right. Mm -hmm. Now, I live in this neighborhood, not here, we're in Astoria, but I live in Richmond Hill for the last 33 years. Hmm. All right? And I don't, intend, I don't intend to move. I love Richmond Hill, very diverse community. My wife and I raised our three children there. Hmm. My oldest son is a New York State trooper. Middle son is a, a, an attorney, and my daughter is an attorney. So we raised them right in Richmond Hill, went to the local school, and I'm very proud of this community, and I'm here to protect the community. I protected this community for 39 years. Um, when I was a judge, I handled mostly murder cases, and one of them was the murder of the imam on 79th Street and Liberty Avenue about that. By now, it's about two years ago, two and a half years ago. I remember that. that yeah. One yeah. o'clock in the afternoon, he was yep. walking on Liberty mm -hmm. Avenue mm -hmm. with his and assistant. And I think uh, the, uh, the imam was from uh, Bengal Bangladesh uh, yes. community, right? Yes, the Bangladesh community. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, they came into the courtroom every day. I presided over the trial as a judge, and I learned about the community, and we spoke to the community after the case. And at time for sentence, they made statements, they're called victim impact statements. Mm -hmm. Once a person is convicted at the time of sentence, if you want to make a victim impact statement to the judge, you're allowed to. And it was very sad to listen to the statements that they made, very sad. It was where, such a where basically these people who uh, were the 
if I may call, use the word parishioners of his mosque, they were talking about that, how it is going to affect their lives and their kids' lives. Yeah. How are they going to be lost? He was the shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. He was the shepherd. Basically, he was the, he was the shepherd. shepherd. Yeah. And they yeah. lost their shepherd and it broke their hearts. It was very sad. Mm. Very sad. Mm. And uh, when, when uh, you know, right now there is a discussion going on and there probably uh, is going to be a bill which uh, President Donald Trump has agreed to sign to make the changes in the criminal law. What kind of uh, criminal law changes they are talking about and how it will affect the Queens County where you will be a DA? Well, they're talking about various changes. One I will mention is the uh, discovery changes. Discovery means that when a person is arrested and accused of a crime, mm -hmm. the uh, district attorney has to turn over the materials that they've gathered during their investigation. And this way the defendant can prepare his defense. Uh, this bill makes the district attorneys turn, <coughs> excuse me, turn the papers over sooner, sooner. So that's, that's a fairer way to be, with the caveat that we're not going to turn over materials that would identify witnesses in serious violent cases because you don't want to ever put a witness or a victim in jeopardy by turning over their name and address to the defendant. Okay, so it is like you do have the witnesses, but those witnesses, if uh, you feel like that, okay, in this law, if those witnesses can get intimidated by the person who committed the crime or his friends, then that information will be protected, that will be within, sealed with the DA, but the defense attorney cannot Correct. reach to that. Correct. Uh, but he can qu still question them on the stand, right? Oh, once the case goes to trial, then that information goes over to the defendant. Okay, but not, oh, okay. So till the case starts, the information will be kept protective in a the, way. The DA has to make a motion uh -huh. in front of a judge for a protective order. <coughs> mm -hmm. Basically, it means what the word means. Mm -hmm. Protective yeah. order. Yeah. Uh -huh. Protect the witnesses by having a district attorney keep that information in their file. And uh, what else is there out there which, because see, we come from a different culture, different kind of um, uh, work atmosphere. What would you like to tell me and the audience that which is different and you being a DA will be more approachable or you will make it more reaching out to the community, which has not been happening? Well, like I said, I live in the community in Richmond Hill and I love the community and I always believe that we should, as a government, go out into the community, teach the young people what the district attorney's office is, what the courts do, how they do it, and go out and talk to the, the adults too, because the adults have issues that they want to discuss. Maybe the adults have problems with their children or their neighbor's children, and they can bring those problems to us. It's more like a listening tour. You go out and see what the problems are in the community, because the district attorney can address a lot of the problems. And it could be only a problem just because I grew up in a different culture. I have a different perception of the same words than you who was born and grew up here, right? That's correct. That's correct. It does happen, right? It does happen, yeah. Especially with happen. the young kids and the parents or the next door neighbors yeah. and stuff like that. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, no matter what country you come from, people come into Queens, they buy houses, they raise their children here, and they want the same things that everyone who raised their kids here. It doesn't matter what country they're from. You have 30 seconds, uh, the time is up, to uh, say whatever you want to talk about. Well, I hope, uh, Harpreet, you have me back again, if we talk again on your show. And, Definitely. Uh, and um, I just want to remind everybody that the power that you have as citizens is to be able to vote. The Democratic primary is June 25th. Please consider voting. Thank you. And uh, that, that is something, you know, which I always uh, talk about, voting, 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 it is so important.
And uh, yes, definitely I will have you back before the primary. That's a promise. Until next time, good night and good luck.